My name is Denise Podcutter of Lincoln View Elementary School, and this is News 6. Today we are going to visit Van Wert, Ohio. Our first story is about hot air balloons. Here's our News 6 reporter, Eric McCracken, with this report. How many balloons do you have? We just own the one. Where do you get a balloon? Well, uh, various uh, companies manufacture balloons. This one's manufactured by Barnes, which is in Statesville, North Carolina. How old is your balloon? It'll be a year old in August. How much does a hot air balloon cost? The balloon that you see behind here runs anywhere from thirteen dollars to $15,000. How many people can ride the balloon at one time? Uh, the pilot and three other passengers. When is the best time to fly a balloon? Well, the best time is when it's calm, early in the morning around 6.30, 7 o'clock, or in the evening about 7, 8 o'clock. What is your balloon made out of? Uh, it's made of uh, polyester and nylon. How long does it take to get a license? You have to have uh, 10 hours of flight for a private license plus a, uh, an examination you would take down in Columbus. What is the highest you have ever flown? 10,000 feet. How did you get interested in flying a balloon? Two years ago, my wife uh, got me a ride uh, in a hot air balloon for my birthday. And ever since then, I've had the urge, so I started taking lessons from a friend here in Van Wert, Ohio. Are there any local clubs or organizations for hot air balloons? Not in our area right now. There's a couple groups out of Dayton and Columbus, Ohio, but we haven't organized one in our area at this time yet. This has been Eric McCracken for News 6 from Lincoln View North School. The students of Lincoln View recently had a book swap in their school's library. Greg Thatcher reports on this story. The Lincoln View 6th grade recently held a book swap. Students brought their books into trade. Each book received a ticket which represented the book that the student brought in. Then different classes went into the library and traded the books. All books had to have front and back covers. The books also had to be soft back. The students of Lincoln View enjoyed the book swap a lot. Track is an important school sport. Our News 6 reporter Michelle Neat visited Lincoln View School track team this, in this report. The Lincoln View girls track team consists of 23 members, 10 of which are returning starters. Some of the events are long jump, shot put, discus, relays, dashes, high jump, and a few other events. The girls started out very well in the first meet with Ottaville. The Lancer girls won with a score of 74 to 39. On April 5th, the Lincoln View girls track team went to Spencerville, Ohio for the Bearcat Relays. Five teams in all participated. Our girls tied for first with Parkway. Many of our school records were broken or tied. The boys track team has 22 members. Most of the events are the same as the girls. Unfortunately, the guys started out against some tough competitors. We, we ended up fourth out of five teams participating. We are hoping that our track teams will improve as the year goes on. Spring is the start of tornado season. In this editorial, Derek Fox tells us what to do if a tornado strikes. On April 7th, there was a tornado warning at Lincoln v. North. About 150 people were sent to the locker rooms and bathrooms. The buses were delayed about 45 minutes. It's lucky for us that, the that we have a system that tells us when a tornado is on the way. Now it's time for tornadoes to come, so here are a few rules to follow. When skies get bad, listen to the television or radio for information. Go to basement, ditch, lowest floor, or interior hall. Get under something strong. Take a flashlight or radio with you. Dick Kramer, a local resident, flies radio-controlled airplanes. Our News 6 reporter, Craig Thatcher, will tell us about his hobby. Dick Kramer is a model airplane enthusiast. He has been flying for 33 years. He has eight radio-controlled planes. A few aren't radio-controlled. Radio control is the use of radio signals to guide an object. A complete radio contains transmitter, receiver, and servo control. The transmitter is the handheld unit which guides the object. It emits radio signals to guide the object. The receiver receives the signal, decodes, and converts it to electrical energy. It then sends it to the servo. The servos are miniature motors. They control such things as the elevator and the flaps of a plane. An average plane costs about $550. They can cost $5,000. Radio controls can be used for everything from motorcycles to cars. Thank you for watching News 6. Be sure to join us next week when our News 6 team visits McKinney Harrison School in Auburn, Indiana.